Hey y'all, it's CJ from Smoky Beginnings, and I have a question for you. Do you struggle with dry, flavorless chicken that leaves you questioning your grilling skills? If you do, then I have you covered. I'll show you how to ditch that disappointment that you call chicken and say hello to crazy, juicy chicken thighs. In this video, I'll drop a secret weapon that'll take your chicken from bland to competition-worthy deliciousness. It's a recipe so good your friends and family will be begging to know your tricks. We're talking next level secrets that almost feel illegal. From picking the perfect cut to unlocking the hidden potential of your smoker, I'll be sharing everything you need to know. We'll also tackle those common mistakes that leave chicken dry and flavorless forever. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned pit master or a complete beginner who wouldn't know a smoker from a rocking chair. This video has something for you. It's time to impress everyone with competition worthy chicken made right in your own backyard. So if you're ready to dish the dry chicken and become a backyard barbecue legend, then I'm ready. Let's go. First up, we will utilize one of our secret weapons. It's called the brine. We'll be soaking the chicken for 24 hours, so make sure you plan accordingly. While brining isn't mandatory, it's a game changer for moisture. I highly recommend using a brine. We're using a gallon of water as a base, but adjust the amount depending on your chicken quantity. One cup of kosher or sea salt is a good starting point, but taste and adjust as needed. Now. Let's add some sweetness to balance the salt. A touch of brown sugar complements the smokiness beautifully. Stir everything until the salt and the sugar dissolve completely. Finally, it's time for the star of the show, the chicken thighs. Add them to your Ziploc bag and get ready for brining magic. Place the bag chicken into the refrigerator and let it sit overnight. If you're interested in learning how to smoke a whole chicken, I've covered the whole process in detail in a previous video. Stay tuned until the end of this video where I will have a link to that video. And while you're here, make sure to like and subscribe. Not only are you supporting a small channel, but you're playing an integral part in helping the channel grow and allowing me to deliver great content to others. So it has been about 24 hours and it's time to remove the chicken thighs from the Ziploc bag. Pat the chicken dry, and get ready for the butter bath. Add the chickens to a disposable aluminum foil pan and then take about three sticks of melted butter and pour it right on top of the chicken. Now, some folks might look at this recipe and say, that's too much butter. Well, they're not wrong. This technique is definitely on the indulgent side, but hey, sometimes you gotta treat yourself, right? Here's the deal. The butter bath does two things. First, it bastes the chicken as it cooks keep it incredibly moist and juicy. Second, it helps render some of the fat from the skin, contributing to that crispy golden perfection we're all after. But before you drown your chicken in butter, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. You don't need to completely submerge the thighs. We're aiming for about half the thickness of the chicken to be covered in butter. This ensures that the chicken cooks evenly without getting greasy. Also, some folks like to trim the excess fat and skin before adding the chicken to the butter bath. It's totally up to you. If you prefer a healthier option, go for it. Don't be afraid to leave some fat and skin on. That's where a lot of the flavor comes from. Now here's where things get interesting. We're going to make our own seasoning. When seasoning your chicken, think of the rub as your flavor canvas. You can use store-bought rubs, experiment with your own spice blends, or even go for a simple salt and pepper combo. Just remember the rub shouldn't overpower the natural flavor of the chicken. It should complement it. Season the chicken generously, get the rub all over the surface, and don't be shy. Let those flavors penetrate. With our chicken seasoned and ready to go, it's time to fire up the pit barrel cooker and get to smoking this chicken. We'll need to light up a full charcoal chimney. Once those coals are glowing red and covered in ash, we know they're ready for action. It usually takes about 15 minutes. This isn't gonna be a very long cook. In fact, to smoke the butter bath chicken thighs, it'll take maybe 45 to 60 minutes. So I filled the charcoal basket about halfway once the coals and the charcoal chimney are ready, pour the lit coals onto the unlit coals. Place the grill grate onto the pit butter cooker. I have a link in the description for this smoker. Next, insert the hanging rods for airflow and close the lid. After about 15 minutes, the smoker should be up to temperature, which for our purposes, we want to smoke the chicken thighs at a smoker temp of about 275 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 135 149 degrees Celsius. You can also add some wood chunks for flavoring. A nice fruit wood like cherry, peach, or in my case, apple wood will be the ideal flavoring wood choices. Now that the smoker is up to temp and we have added our flavoring wood, it is time to add the chicken to the smoker. Place the aluminum foil pan directly onto the grill grate. Insert the rods and close the lid. 
we're gonna give the chicken thighs a good hour of smoke to infuse them with that delicious woodsy goodness. A friendly reminder here is patience is key. Low and slow is definitely the way to go. We want the chicken to cook through gently, absorbing all that smoky goodness. While the chicken smokes, let's whip up a finishing touch, a sweet and tangy barbecue sauce with a touch of honey. The sauce would be the sticky, delicious icing on our smoky cake. There are a bajillion barbecue sauce recipes out there, so feel free to use your favorite store-bought one or get creative and make your own. Here's a quick tip. If your sauce is a bit too thick, thin it out with some apple cider vinegar or apple juice. Today, I'm using Dinosaur Barbecue's original barbecue sauce. Dinosaur Barbecue is an awesome barbecue joint in Syracuse, New York that you have to try if you are in the area. In regards to the glaze that we are making, I'm going to go with equal parts of barbecue sauce and honey. The honey is going to add a sweetness to the barbecue sauce. Mix it thoroughly so that the honey is well incorporated into the mixture. And set it off to the side, allow those beautiful flavors to melt. It's been about 45 minutes. We are getting close to our desired internal temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit or 79 degrees Celsius. At this point, there's probably about another 15 minutes of cook time, which is the perfect amount of time for our sauce to get tacky and shine. Remove the chicken thighs from the smoker and aluminum foil pan, then glaze each chicken thigh with the sauce that we have created. I typically pour the sauce on and then use a brush to make sure that the sauce is evenly distributed because every bright deserves that sweet and smoky symphony. But here's a secret, you don't want to drown the chicken. A light coating is all you need to let those smoky and savory flavors shine through. Back onto the smoker they go for our final 15 minutes of cook time. That sauce will caramelize, the smoke will deepen, and the anticipation will be killer. This is where the magic happens. The smoky goodness marries with the sweet and tangy barbecue sauce, creating an irresistible glaze. I really can't wait. It has been a total of one hour of cook time. We've reached our desired internal temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit which for me is the ideal internal temperature. I have found if you remove the chicken at 165 degrees, the skin isn't crispy. In fact, it could be rather rubbery. On the flip side, if you remove the chicken at 180 or 185 degrees Fahrenheit, then the chicken has a crispy skin, but the meat is dry. At 170 to 175, you get tender, flavorful meat with crispy skin. Here's the moment of truth. We're pulling the chicken flies off the smoker. And let me tell you, they look incredible. Glistening with sauce and the smell is pure heaven. After letting the chicken rest for about five to 10 minutes, we're going to shred the chicken and take it to a family get together. I know that this is gonna be a hit because this my friends is butter bath chicken done right. It's a simple recipe with knockout results. So ditch the ordinary and give this a try. You won't regret it. But before you rush out and buy all the ingredients, here are some extra tips for the ultimate butter bath chicken success. Use fresh, high quality chicken thighs. Bone in or boneless, it's up to you. Don't overwork the meat when seasoning it. We want a nice, even layer of flavor, not a mushy mess. If you find the butter starts to brown too quickly, reduce the heat slightly. You don't want it to burn. An internal temperature of 170 degrees Fahrenheit for the chicken is ideal. Use a meat thermometer to ensure perfect doneness. And there you have it. Butter bath chicken that is restaurant quality and made easily at home. Now all that there is left to do is serve the chicken along your favorite sides. Give the recipe a try. Comment below. Tell me what kind of flavors you'd love to try in this recipe. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe as that is the best way to support the channel. And if you really like this video, check out the playlist just at the end. It's all about recipes you can cook on the Pit Barrel Cooker. It features recipes for steaks, chickens, pork, vegetables, briskets, and a whole lot more. For more great recipes, visit my website, smokybeginnings.com. And until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.